You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. And today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Echo. And so I've decided to make a uh, uh, make a little bit of a decision when it comes when it regard when it comes regarding blah. I am messing up my words. When it comes to the uh, endings that I'm going to be going through for this game, I'm going to be going through every ending for every character, but for each character, instead of starting a new playthrough, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up where that branching path was so that I can see that extra ending, so that I'll just, like, add, like, alternate ending to the title or something like that. But anyway, guys, let's get right back into it, shall we? We were just hanging out with Kudzu after uh, escaping some horrible things. So, let's see where the crazy train takes us today. I hadn't had time to really figure out what he was doing before Duke barged in. He said someone was after him and that he needed to leave. He talked to you? Where is he? I feel the fur pricking up all over my body. The thought that TJ might be out there somewhere in the chaos is terrifying. How could someone like him survive that? I'm certainly doing a terrible job. I don't know. He asked me if I had a car, but I don't, so he kept on up the road. Up the road? There's nothing past Kudzu's trailer aside from Carl's house, and that's over a mile away. But Carl doesn't have a car anymore. Maybe he's just staying with the Ram? I hope that's the case. After he left, though, is when things really started going crazy. Kudzu shakes his head. You know Dale? Yeah. Dale is the only otter, is the only otter in town now that my family has left. He was walking up the road with a fucking shotgun, pointing it around and stuff. Is that out of the ordinary for Dale? I want to get back to the, on the topic of TJ. If he went up the road, away from the town, we could still find him. But he was bleeding. Had cuts on his legs and jeans were all ripped up. Oh. But he knocked on my door. I didn't open it, but he yelled through it, saying there was a meeting in the center of town. What kind of meeting? A fucked up one, apparently. Anyway, I went over to Leo's house to see if he was home. Then I saw the window. Kudzu rips the back of his neck, his ears lowering. Obviously, I knew some bad shit had happened, but I had no way of knowing what. Anyway, I went to the town center, hoping I'd see you two there, but just getting there was crazy. Kudzu looks back at me. Jeremy's house was burning, and Janice's house looked like it had been broken into, too. Jeremy's house? That was Jenna's house. Didn't run into anyone until I got to the townhouse. This whole thing is just getting bigger and bigger. While I'd been in Brian's trailer, everything had been falling apart outside. But why? What's going on? Kudzu shakes his head. I still don't know that, even after they told me. Who? The older guys, Mark and the mayor, said something about this having happened before. That it was our turn or something. Our turn? What does that mean? Kudzu shakes his head again. I don't know. They just said it happened to their grandparents that we had to be ready. Ready? Did they tell us what to do? Said to pray. Is, is that all they told you? Basically. Acted like there was nothing we can do about it. And, uh... Kudzu pauses. What? They also said we can't leave and showed us a body. Kudzu stops talking. I stare. Like, a dead body? Kudzu swallows and nods. What is going on? I feel my voice rise in pitch and Kudzu puts up his hands as if trying to quiet me down. I don't know, but there were weird cuts on the body. They said we can't leave because something out there will stop us if we try to leave town. I stare at Kudzu. Like, a serial killer or something? They wouldn't say. They acted like it's a... monster. Well, then they're lying, right? Kudzu is quiet for a moment, then shakes his head. After everything I... After everything I've seen, I just don't know. Well, I think trying to figure out what the hell we're going... I think trying to figure out what the hell we're going to do. Well, we need to find Leo, at least. Kudzu nods, like he's already thought about that. Then maybe get my car and at least try to leave. 
Kazu doesn't say anything to that. But if we can't leave, for whatever reason, then we at least have to find the rest of my friends. I look at Kudzu. Well, I do. I don't know what you're going to be. Kudzu gives me a wry smile. Well, I don't have anywhere else to go, aside from out of here. Besides, I owe it to Leo to get him out. I feel a warm rush of relief flow over me, knowing Kudzu will be with me. I don't think I'd be able to do any of this alone. So, so we're gonna get Leo? Kudzu nods. Well, I am at least. You should really stay here. Get some more rest after what you went through. Of course I'd rather stay here and hide until Kudzu comes back, but Leo tried to save me back at the diner, risked his life to do it. After everything Leo had done for me, I owe him too. No, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with you. Kudzu shakes his head. I don't think so. It'll make things easier if it's just me. Kudzu shifts, looking toward the kitchen. Besides, I'll have Leo's gun with me, in case something goes wrong. He was my boyfriend. I can't just sit here while you save him. Kudzu pauses. Listen, I know Leo, and I know he would never want me to bring you into something like this. Yeah, well, Leo not wanting me to do something never stopped me before. Getting defiant like this is making me feel better. He gives me purpose again. Kudzu looks like he's about to shake his head again, but I continue. Besides, it might help things. One of us could go in while the other distracts Duke or something. Kudzu looks unsure, so I press my advantage. And if something goes wrong, one of us would be there to help the other. Kudzu pulls out, pulls out one of his whiskers. Maybe, if it's just Duke there. He might not even be there. He might be at Brian's trailer or somewhere else around town. Kudzu sighs, then looks me right in the eyes. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm not, but I nod anyway. Oh, that was an abrupt change of scenery. We try to keep off the road <clears throat> in the brush on our way to Duke's house. Despite our situation, the biggest thing on my mind right now is, is ticks. I thought you said sticks. Funny how the mind works. The faint shouts and yells coming from the town are more frequent now. Another pop comes from that direction. It reminds me of the gun Kudzu has tucked into his waistband. He's never used one before, and it took us a solid couple of minutes to decide if he should even stick it there. Another pop. I can't help but think that that's where the motel is, where Jenna might be. Here, though, not much is out of place aside from the smell of smoke on the breeze. That is until we come across a body hanging from a tree about a hundred yards from Duke's house. I'm the first to notice it, and when I do, I gasp and instinctively reach for Kudzu. He catches my hand, then looks up as he holds on to me. It's high up, maybe 50 feet, but from the markings on the fur, I think it's a fox. Oh, Jesus. Kudzu whispers next to me as I look away, feeling my stomach turn again. What the hell? How did he get up there? I look back and see what he's hanging. I didn't see that he's hanging by his wrist. I don't think he could have done that himself. Yeah. We both stare up at him for a little while longer, long enough to notice the long vertical slashes down his back. Those are the same cuts I saw on the other guy. Kudzu whispers distractedly. But who put him up there? Kudzu's silent and I keep staring up at the guy. The first dead guy that I've ever seen. Suddenly, all of my motivation to get Leo starts to evaporate. Kudzu rests a hand on my shoulder and I jump. Sorry! Kudzu pats me. You alright? I'll take you back, okay? That sounded like the best idea in the world right now. I hesitate. When I think of Leo, I imagine him in the same situation I was with Brian. Duke didn't seem as fucked up, but I have no idea what he's capable of. That thought makes it feel as if my heart is dropping through the ground, so I grip my teeth and shake my head. No, no, I'm okay. Kudzu looks at me closely, then nods. Okay, let's move back towards the road, though. I don't think anyone is around right now anyway. I want to move towards the road, too, mainly because I'm actually starting to worry that moving further away from the town really is dangerous. Duke's house is dark as we approach it. As we get closer, though, I see flashes of light from the wind from a window as well. We both crouch next to the house, behind a small cluster of sagebrush. Alright, so all I can really think to do is knock on the door, see if he's there. I swallow. 
You'd stay hiding, of course, but if he does come out, I don't know, I may try to put him down right there. Then I'd come out and help. Kudzu looks out and Kudzu lets out a low chuckle. Yeah, but again, I'm not sure if that's what I'll do. We might be able to talk to him out of we might be able to talk him out of this. Yeah. I don't have much faith in that plan. But if he doesn't but if he isn't in there, well, we'll probably go in and find Leo, alright? Okay. My heart rate picks up as I realize how close we are to making this happen. I start to have second thoughts. Maybe we should have at least looked for the sheriff? Maybe we should have gone straight to the motel? Alright. I can tell Kudzu was nervous, too, as he wipes his hands on his tank top before standing up slowly. Just watch from here. If he comes out with his gun, though, I'm not going to try anything. He hesitates. And if I get shot or something, don't help. Just run back to my house and, and start looking for your other friends, I guess. Now I'm really starting to feel unprepared for all this. Everything is moving way too fast. There isn't really any there isn't really any time though. We have to save Leo as soon as possible. There's no telling what Duke might be doing with him. As Kudzu starts to move away, I get the urge to hug him. He's done so much for me already, saving me and now trying to save Leo. But by now he's already halfway across the yard to the house. I hold my breath and watch as Kudzu's dark form melds in with the blackness of the house. Oh, pardon me, guys. It's like he's being swallowed up by it in a way. After a few moments, I hear him knock on the door. I listen, trying to breathe through my mouth instead of whistling my instead of my whistling nose, so I can better hear what's going on. Kudzu knocks again, much more loudly. I thought that was a gunshot. <laughs> hey, it's Cud. I need some help. I look up and down the road, worried someone's going to hear the shouting. There's a slight rustling behind me, and I look back, eyes wide. I don't see anything at first, but then I feel like there's a shape behind another grove of sagebrush about 20 feet back. Something crouched, the moonlight defining its shape through the brush. I squint, completely stopping my breathing. It looks like it has a tail. A really thick one, like an otter. Was it Dale? I can't even tell. I can't even tell if it really is a person, though. Chase! Kudzu whispers shouts, and I jump before stumbling to my feet. The shape behind me doesn't move at all, and I try to reassure myself that it's probably a rock. I jog over to Kudzu as he tries the door, trying to not think, think too much about what I just saw. Locked. He looks around for a while, then starts moving down the side of the house. Look for a window. Are we going to break one? Maybe. Should only take us a few minutes to sweep the house, then we can get the hell out. We quickly spot a window on the back of the house. Kudzu looks in and bites his lip. I'm just worried that Duke might still be in there with a gun or something. He bends over, picking up a sizable rock. Well, not much choice. If I say run, run. Got it? I nod, and Kudzu lifts the rock above his head before smashing it through the window. The sound is probably the loudest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. I cover my own ears, like that's going to lessen the sound. Kudzu jumps to the side, away from the window, reaching back to hold on to me. The fur on Kudzu's body frizzes up, and I see his ears perked up as far as they can go. Once the final tinkling of the glass subsides, we both listen. My ears are ringing, but the only other sound I can hear are the chirping of the crickets. Finally, Kudzu lets out a soft breath. Alright, let's go. Oh god, what are we going to find in there? I help him push out a few more shards of glass. Once that's done, the raccoon hoists himself inside, very carefully maneuvering around the sharp, broken edges. He turns and reaches out to me, helping me through in the same fashion. Even though I'm trying to be careful, when I bring my arm in, it drags along a jagged edge of glass sticking out from the side. A grimace, the fiery pain taking a moment to really set in. Shit, you okay? He grabs my wrist so he can pull my arm up to examine it by moonlight and sucks in a breath. Oh, fuck, you might need stitches for that. That's when I see the blood starting to ooze up from the fur. It's only about an inch long, but the amount of blood coming out is surprising. Damn it, I'll take care of it after we find Leo. My guess is he's going to pass out from blood loss. I pull my arm away, despite Kudzu still trying to take a look at it. 
All right, I'll see if we can't find something to wrap it up in. Kudzu starts fumbling along the wall and finds a light switch. Oh, looks kind of cozy. Oh god, wow, those chairs are really in bad shape. I'm surprised to see a fairly quaint and tidy home. Unlike Kudzu's trailer, though, there's barely anything in it. There's a single sofa and a very old-fashioned TV in what I presume is the living room. There's a fireplace and a few dirty-looking chairs on the other end of the room. In front of us is a long hallway with a few doors on both sides. Alright, check every room and door. It's not a very big house. Kudzu sets off down the hall. Look for stairs. I feel like he'd be in the basement. As Kudzu goes into the room on, into a room to the left, I peer into one on the right. It looks like a bedroom with a single twin in the middle of the room. I take a few steps in, looking around and not seeing anything else. Oh, there's the alarm! Well, at least it didn't end on... I mean, at least it didn't end on, like, I take a few steps in and suddenly I see a figure in the... I see a figure in the middle of the room or something like that. No, there's nothing in this room, so we're good. <laughs> Alrighty, we will pick up the next episode, Searching Through Duke's House. This is pretty cool. Oh man, I'm really enjoying this. It's like a big mystery. I love the I love the mystery behind this. I love the horror elements, the unknown entity that's preventing people from leaving this town. You know, it's very Lovecrafty, and I love that. God, I hope all my all my friends are okay. I really do. God, TJ, Flynn, Jenna, Carl. God, I hope they're I hope they're all okay. I don't want anyone to die. But I know there's some bad endings in this game, so I'm kind of bracing myself for some of the horrible stuff coming up. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!